Hello and welcome to episode three of FC Popcorn, a film companion original podcast, which I'm told I have to say. Uh, I'm Sujin. I'm Gail. I'm Pratyush. Uh, and today we are talking uh, about some of the films we're most films and shows that we're most excited about uh, in 2023. And I think it is looking to be a pretty cool year. We have uh, new Salman Khan films, new Shah Rukh films, new Zoya films. Salman films, Fil- plural? Do we have? Is it not plural? Isn't it? It's just like one, right? Oh, we'll find out. Like that's that's going to be on your list anyway. So. Um, and uh, most importantly, we have Cocaine Bear, which is the only reason I'm here today <laughs> to discuss Cocaine Bear. Uh, but yes, we all have our lists of our topics for the year, things we're most excited about. Uh, Gail, we will start with you. First pick to you. Uh, so to anyone who knows me, this will come as no surprise. The number one movie I'm most looking forward to is Oppenheimer. That's what I guess. <laughs> you knew this was coming. I thought it would be the Salman Khan film, honestly. <laughs> sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> Films? <laughs> film. Sim- sorry, Films. Uh, yeah, Gail picks Nolan. In a year with just one Nolan film and many Salman films. <laughs> yeah, so to me, whenever I think about the big screen theatrical experience, the images that I always think about are the wormhole scene in Interstellar or the city folding in on itself from Inception. Um, I'm a huge Nolan fan, which I think everyone knows by now. I used to have countdowns to his movies. I'm really excited about Oppenheimer, which um, is the story of the Manhattan Project and how the atomic bomb came to be. Uh, that's my number one pick. Yeah. Is a uh, genuine question, because I, I don't know much about it, apart from the fact that it's Nolan. Mm-hmm. Does it look like a, like a Nolan, in quotes, blockbuster movie or more like a Dunkirk subdued smaller film that's big only because mm-hmm. he's making it? Dunkirk it's was subdued and small. <laughs> Compared to, I mean, his other <laughs> stuff where it's like designed for like the massive popcorn experience. Mm-hmm. Dunkirk was mm-hmm. a Nolan indie film as much no, as you can. I, yeah, I don't think Dunkirk no? was. No, to me, it was, he was still messing around with time. He still had the big set pieces. But yeah, when I think about Dunkirk, I think about the smaller moments yeah. on the mm-hmm. board, things like that. Yeah, so yeah, in a way, mm-hmm. I think right. what I meant was less mm-hmm. spectacle. Dunkirk to me was massive, but I don't think of it as spectacle as, as I do like the other Nolan mm-hmm. films. So it's what, very interesting because the trailer hinges a lot on close-ups of Killian Murphy's face. Yeah. And it seems to be a more subdued sort of, yeah. sort of melancholic um, contemplation of what we've done to the planet, which is something I feel like Nolan's been thinking about a lot. Yeah. Um, if you look at his earlier movies, they've always been about things that you as a human being can't control. Yeah. And that you're helpless, uh, you're helpless in your fight against, like time itself. Uh, but over his last few movies, I feel like he's been thinking about the planet as a whole. Like when you think about Interstellar and the blight that's devastated the planet, when you think about Dunkirk and how you get that ticking clocks uh, sort of time element where he's really thinking about how close we came to like another war and yeah. how that could have gone on. And even here, I get the sense of like, okay, fine, we've created something that has potentially devastated us. So it's very interesting for me to see Nolan's movies go from personal failings to sort of planetary failings. And even Tenet, in a sense, was about this idea of a temporal war, right? And yeah. a future in which we ruin the planet. They've always been weirdly optimistic, though, his previous movies. Like in Tenet, they do save the day. Dunkirk also has an optimistic ending. I don't yeah. know if he'll do that with Oppenheimer, which is what I'm interested to see. So Nolan is making a James Cameron film. It's all about <laughs> tugging trees. Got it. Uh, that makes sense. No, it looks really cool. It does, it does. Uh, Are you going to do a countdown to a film? You're going to do a countdown to the film? Uh, when are you going to start? Today? Tomorrow? Hmm. Yesterday. How? <laughs> <laughs> a year ago. <laughs> I feel like also at this point Oppenheimer and Barbie are inextricable. Like it's a given double bill. So we're just clubbing them together. Barbie was on my long list. I have to yeah, say. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so no, somebody had to say Barbie. Uh, what, mm-hmm. Is that on your... Not, it uh, no, it was on my list of like films that definitely wo- need to be mentioned even mm-hmm. if they're not on our direct top three. Uh, next pick to you, Pratyush. So I am really excited by Pedro Almodovar's uh, gay cowboy <laughs> film, Strange Way of Life. It's going to premiere at Cannes in May. Mm-hmm. With It stars Pedro Pascal and Ethan Hawke. Uh, I mean, a gay Western <laughs> short film, <laughs> Almodovar, I mean, it's a no-brainer because for me, when I joined Film Companion in 2019, I knew nothing about world cinema. And I remember the first ever Mami in 2019 that I attended, I had no idea who these directors were. But Mohini, who was the associate editor at the time, told me that you have to watch Pedro yeah. Almodovar's Pain and Glory. And I went with a friend who had just given up smoking and we went, <laughs> watched the film. And when the film got over, we made a silent beeline to the closest taker and smoked our lungs out in between sighing and thinking, what a good movie, what a good movie, and back to the smoking. I mean, the film has, his art has that kind of an impact on you because of the simple fact that he 
takes desire seriously. Mm-hmm. I think one of the f- most uh, sublime moments in that film, Pain and Glory specifically, was when this child, which is an autobiographical film, so we have this child who's suddenly uh, looking at this Adonis-like man naked mm-hmm. in floodlit in his floodlit home, and his reaction, his first ever reaction to desire, is to faint. Mm-hmm. For him to just completely lose consciousness because he's so overwhelmed by desire. I mean, his production house is Eldest Year, which means the desire. This film, it's all, also, it's, the title is based on a fado that Amelia Rodriguez wrote, which, where, in which she's saying there's nothing stranger than the existence which ignores its own desires. So here is a man who takes desire, I don't want to say seriously, but uh, playfully too, right? Like mm-hmm. he's not, like if you look, look at all his films, the way he talks about sex, the way he talks about uh, the way we interact with each other in that moment of lust. It's playful, it's sometimes haunting, sometimes it's haunted, there's almost like, there's a fearful element in it, sometimes there's a bit of exploitation in it. Uh, He doesn't shy away from either the beauty or the brutality of sex. Uh, So his his reaction to desire was fainting and your reaction to his film was smoking your lungs out yes mm-hmm. yes i hope you watch only bad films <laughs> <laughs> no because like so this was I, I had no idea right who this man was and right after that so the friend who he's a cinephile and so i said can you just get me every film almadavar has ever made and so he went to jaipur and came back with 100 gb of almadavar and that that was my christmas gift <laughs> you know <laughs> so I mean, this is a man who's had that kind of profound impact on my relationship to cinema. Yeah. So anything he makes, mm-hmm. even his that Tilda Swinton short film that he made, wasn't the most exciting. Uh, but I'll still watch it, yeah. you know, and I'll still talk about it. His is an art that will never not compel me, even if it's mm-hmm. not the best. And this was supposed to be his answer to Brokeback Mountain or like yeah, something yeah. like that? Right? Something yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like his response to it or his version of it? or His, his version his of version it, I think, yeah. It. Uh, but yeah, can't wait for some mm-hmm. really raunchy gay sex. <laughs> <laughs> you should have started with that. <laughs> like, um, so you went from Nolan to yeah. Almodovar to, yeah. you know, again, my pick of, of moving world cinema, <laughs> which is Salar, which is the next film from the same director who made KGF, mm-hmm. uh, which is one the three of us actually saw together because I loved it so much that I was like, wow, this is cinema. Mm-hmm. And so we watched it again. Uh, we convinced Gail to watch it. We yes. Did. I really appreciate that you guys did and yeah. that you explained to me the plot of KGF1 <laughs> on the way to KGF2. Yeah. And then yeah. realizing that it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. It was uh, just a great time. And then we, we we found all the nuances of that film. Like the <laughs> length of beard is directly in proportion to how evil somebody is. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but I'm genuinely excited for Salah for a couple of reasons. So I know nothing about this film. I don't think we know much about it anyway, but that's enough. So it's the same... Uh, the visuals of it that we've just seen, like stills of it, looks again from the same KGF world of just entirely unhinged insanity um, and just like a massive mass movie. Uh, it stars Prabhas, who has not been good in any film f- ever since Bahubali, I think. Uh, and hopefully this is his like comeback. Um, and uh, and it is technically a Telugu film. Uh, and the only other thing we know is Prithvi Raj plays the villain in it. So we've literally just seen two stills of it. But I'm I'm all in. I just I just want I need my f- like share of that <laughs> insane unhinged. Cinema, so I can't wait. Remember when we were watching KGF at the interval? I was very nervous because I was like, what is Gail going to think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not just about the film, but yeah. about us bringing yeah. her <laughs> to the film. And so during the interval, I just looked at her and she was like, the film slaps. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, this is the best it moment. Did slap. <laughs> but then it's nice to know that it's not just us. You know, there yeah, must yeah. be something in that. And you just said it's one of the most insanely entertaining films ever. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, no, I can't wait. I, I will just... happily accompany the both of you to KGF. <laughs> <laughs> 